I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com. Thanks so much for watching today's project. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a whipped shea butter. So why would you whip shea butter? Like what? <laughs> this is perfectly great on your skin as is. The reason we whip shea butter is to make it softer so it spreads over the skin more easily and is more absorbable. Now shea butter on its own is a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty, it's solid at room temperature. So it's not going to just kind of rub into your skin very easily. So in this case, we're adding some evening primrose oil and some calendula extract to help soften up our shea butter. For this project, I'm going to be using a very special shea butter. It's a natural, unrefined shea butter from Ghana that comes from a small cooperative. Unrefined means it hasn't been bleached and it hasn't been deodorized. So that's why this is a bleached and deodorized shea butter and this is unrefined. Now, what that means is it's going to smell slightly nutty. So keep that in mind if you're deciding to work with the unrefined versus the refined shea butter. This is a little bit of a personal preference, but I personally find the smell so good. It's warm, it's nutty. I swear it smells like a campfire or just like tiny little bits of it. If you like the smell of coffee, there's a really good chance you're going to love this smell. For this recipe, I'm also using arrowroot powder. Now arrowroot powder isn't a must have, but what it helps to do is absorb the oils just a little bit. So when you put this on, it feels more smooth and creamy as opposed to just oily. And since this is all oils, you don't have to use a preservative in this product because there's no water, so microbes can't grow. Finally, I love to put some of those lotion-based face masks on at night and then just go to sleep with them on. And so I made this recipe with just natural essential oils that are really good for skin. So for this recipe, I'm using Lang Lang, rose geranium, and lavender essential oil. Now, Rose geranium and Lang Lang tend to be a little more pricey, so if you just wanted to do lavender essential oil, this would be a fantastic product to put on any delicate areas, including your face, even just with the lavender essential oil. So for this whipped shea butter, we are actually going to just measure out our shea butter and whip it as is. We are not melting it ahead of time. Now, it's personal preference if you want to melt it ahead of time. I do not melt my shea butter ahead of time because shea butter is comprised of a variety of fatty acids. And what ends up happening when you melt the fatty acids? Think about a regular butter, right? If you're melting just table butter, you know how that table butter never goes back to kind of its creamy consistency? It's the same thing with shea butter. And so unless you are melting and then whipping and cooling extremely quickly by say putting it in the freezer right away, what often happens is those grains of the heavier Fatty acids in the shea butter will drop out of suspension, leaving you with actual grains. Now, the grains aren't harmful at all, but if you're selling the product or you're giving it away, people might be a little confused. Well, what are these grains? Now, they melt right back into the skin, so if you get grainy shea butter or you get grains in this product, don't stress it. It's not gonna hurt the final product in the sense of how it performs. It's just a little bit of a curiosity. So I've got all of my unrefined shea butter in here. So this is just a normal kitchen blender. You could also use a stand mixer. And I'm just gonna whip this and just kind of get it a little worked in before I add my liquids. Cause if I add my liquids now, whoosh, everything goes everywhere. this is a little bit more kind of mixed in, I'm going to add in my liquid oils. And for this, I'm using evening primrose oil. And for this, I'm just going to do a couple ounces. And so I am weighing this out because I want to be very precise with my measurements because volume and weight are not the same when it comes to oils. Then I'm going to also add my calendula extract right now. And the calendula extract is fantastic for helping with redness in skin. And it's also really good for mature skin because it is in a fractionated coconut oil. So it's the extract suspended in fractionated coconut oil, which makes it oil soluble. So if you're ever using this in say lotions or anything like that, you're adding it to the oil phase of that process. Now I'm just going to whip this in really slowly and gently because now we have a lot of oil in kind of a more solid state, trying to whip it into that, and it could be really easy to get messy. Just like 
like in baking, I'm gonna take a spatula and just kind of scrape down from the sides and make sure everything gets fully incorporated in so that way we don't end up with any areas that haven't gotten our liquid oils because the liquid oils are really key for making a soft and spreadable butter. And now I'm gonna add a little bit more of the evening primrose oil and just make sure that this is a really good spreadable consistency. So a couple more ounces of evening primrose oil. I love evening primrose oil in anything I'm using when I'm making like an eye serum, for example, or any sort of healing skin balm for myself and my little kids. I use evening primrose oil quite a lot because of the consistency and the absorbability factor. So now I'm gonna add my essential oils before I add my arrowroot, and I'm just doing about three milliliters of each. And the reason for that is we do want to have a nice scent, but this ends up being, but you don't want it to be so strong that it's like a perfume or something that announces you when you walk into the room. And also I do use this on my face. I really did design this to be a facial product. And so I don't really want really strong smelling stuff near my eyes either, because it can make your eyes water or irritate them. So now I'm just gonna whip this in and then I'm gonna do my arrowroot. Now I'm gonna add my arrowroot powder and I'm gonna do two ounces of this by weight and it's pretty light, light and floofy. So keep that in mind when you're adding it. Ooh, it's about perfect, yay. And because it's light and floofy, I am just gonna hand stir just once or twice just to kind of trap my powder in the oils so that way I don't end up with a poof of arrowroot all over my kitchen. And of course, if you are making this to sell, you will be wearing a hairnet and gloves and goggles and all of that. So keep that in mind too when you're looking at this recipe going, gosh, this will be great. I think my clients would love it. Make sure you're using good manufacturing practices if you're gonna manufacture this for sale as opposed for a home use or to give away. I'm just gonna give this one more scrape down on the sides to make sure everything is evenly mixed in and then it'll be time to kind of gloop and glop and plop this right into our jars. So now it's time to fill the jars. So you can either just use a spoon and plop it in or it's a little messy, but if you have a, a pastry kind of frosting bag, this makes a really nice filling tool. If you are, if you're kind of want, if you're wanting to get more of an even fill or something that looks a little uh, more uniform and so it's kind of a pain in the rear to fill I'll give you that but it really does produce a much nicer kind of final fill so I'm just gonna put a little bit more in and then work my work it down and I filled it a little too full but you'll be able to kind of see how it works and sploosh down and do that again So once you're done filling these, it's time to label them, sell them, give them away. And you're gonna wanna store your batch in like a cool dry place because you don't want anything to melt and then remelt and cause those grains. And then like I mentioned earlier, of course, since this is a non-water soluble based product, meaning there's no water in it, you technically don't have to use a preservative. If you wanna be extra safe and you that's something you're more comfortable with, Optifin would be the preservative that I use for this product. And this product will have just about a shelf life of a year, if not a little bit more. Your shelf life is always kind of the shortest shelf life oil in there. And so in this case, it'd probably be the Evening Primrose, which has a shelf life of just about a year. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you make this project or really any other product with Brambleberry products, I really want to see it. So make sure you're hashtagging us, hashtag BrambleOn on all social media so we can see your products and get inspired by what you are making and what you're creating. And of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so so you can be notified every single time a new video comes out. Until next time, everyone, happy soaping. Thank mm -hmm. you.